The perversion of religion today is, is that uh, it has been um, not religion in itself because it's defined distinctively for what it is, distinctively for what it is. Uh, the problem or the issue we have today uh, are the real true people of Yah constantly have an association with things that the Most High commanded us to come out of a long, long time ago. And the coming out is for a reason. You come out in order to go in. And there's many times that pastors have been styled in the Bible to be um, Baptist, Methodist, Apostolic, Pentecostal, Missionary, Baptist, so forth and so on. Church of Christ, Seventh-day Adventist, you name it. They have all different types of grocery store labels to put up on everybody who claims to be believers in the Most High. Isn't that right? That's true. Now, assembly together, or what people commonly call church, is not for the purposes of entertainment, like the church world is dumb. That has been a means to desensitize us and to keep us in a dumb, stupor state, so that we are one, so that we will not go on to perfection and be the spiritual vessels that God called us to be in order to bring forth vessels of sanctification unto honor. So we have misrepresented and been in places that have been mis has misrepresented the purpose of the Most High, and we ourselves have been partakers in it. Amen. But after you come to the knowledge of the truth, it's, it's, it's time out for the madness, the foolish, and the folly, and it's time to grow into grace and in the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's time for us to, to no longer be children, but it's time for us to be wise. Amen. It's time for us to put away the childish and the foolish things, and it's time for us to grow up and quit being like natural men, but to be the men that God has called us to be. Amen? Amen? And so that's the reason why that we get a lot of teaching. And I also know that in the last days, that there was, as there were false prophets among the people, there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable Heresies. Now, a lot of people have not been able to define what a damnable heresy is. A damnable heresy is simply a lie. There will be people that would teach lies and call it the truth. And if believed, it would cause your soul to be damned. And of course, with Christianity, probably the most perverted religion that has ever darkened the face of mankind on earth, uh, no wonder that we have a lot of people going into the eternal lake of fire, um, hook, line, and sinker, in the masses, as it tunes upon millions upon millions upon millions because people put mental assent and choose to believe the lie without any knowledge of the truth whatsoever at all. We've learned from religion how to be contentious with someone who doesn't agree with our persuasion or our perspective in the way that we have been trained and we have been brought up in religion. But the truth is is in this word, and the truth is not something that jumps out at face value because the book is a sealed book. And the book is only open to those who have a hunger and a thirst to be righteous. And that's the reason why we see so many forms of godliness that is presented before us. Now, the true form of godliness will always deliver from sin. The true form of godliness would also purge you from iniquity. The true form of godliness would allow your heart to be pliable to where that the most high can work with you because he is the potter and you are the clay. He can mold you, not you molding him. He can make you, not you remaking him. He said a statement a long, long time ago. I am the Lord thy God. I am Elohim Yahweh and I change not. And that's the one characteristic and attribute we can understand about the Most High to know that if we come to him, whether it be yesterday, we come today, or we can look way out into the future, that he will be constant. He will remain the same no matter what. Don't care how times have changed or people have changed or perspectives have changed or buildings have changed. The one thing about the Most High is he never changes. The reason why he never changes is because he's already perfect. There's no need for improvement in him because there's nothing that he can himself improve on. He's the only one out of the universe that can create. The only one. 
Everybody else emulates and imitates what he does, but he's the only one. That's why he is called the creator. That's why he's called by many, many names. And since he created us in his image, and we took hook, line, and sinker what the devil has sold us, which was sin. Since that time of birth, a man, man has been conforming to the image of Satan. When his spirit comes into us and it compels us, it causes us to keep his commandments, that is the inception of us to now start walking in the newness of life to where now where we was conformed to some grotesque, dark, spiritual reptile of a being, now he brings us out of that darkness and he slowly transforms us and conforms us back into the image of his dear son so that the same glory that the Christ had with the father from the beginning, we also can partake in that inheritance and share in that glory. He transforms us not so we can remain the same dumb, stupid, ignorant, obnoxious, arrogant, overbearing, self-willed, rebellious, wicked people that we once had as a nature he gives us his holy spirit to help us he gives us his holy spirit to 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 mold us he gives us his holy spirit to continually to counsel us so we can have a real intimate relationship with him so he can know that he is with us always because remember he said i will never leave you nor forsake you i'll be with you always even unto the end of the world and make no mistake about it this world has an end and the end of this world is coming. Amen. It makes no difference. You died 5,000 years ago. This world does have a time and it has an expected end. Amen. But only a few people that have passed through this life come into this world through the matrix of the womb is only going to be worthy to obtain eternal life. And in order to obtain eternal life, it's going to take discipline. Amen. It's going to take obedience. It's going to have to show us showing that we really do care for the sacrifice, the recompense of the reward that was made for us to reconcile us and to atone for the transgression, the great transgression that we have all had against the one that created us. Amen. So now he's in the process of molding us and we need to allow the truth to mold us because there is no greater deliverance than truth. Jesus said, ye shall know the truth. That means you would have an understanding. That means you'll be intimate with this. You will know. It's not, be something, it's not something done off in the dark, way over in the corner on the side. It's something that you shall know. You shall know the truth. And when you know the truth, that's one thing about the truth. It will make you free. Amen. Free from what? Free from sin. Free from bondage. Free from doubt. Free from uncertainty. Free from everything that causes you to be against the will and against the image of a holy, sanctified Israelite. Everything that comes against that, he has shed his blood, sacrificed his blood, his own self to give us freedom. Amen. This liberation, we should be glad. That he's opened up our understanding. We should be thankful. We should be. We should be. We, we really should be.